Welcome to Circuit Analysis, I'm Jesse. Today we're continuing our ANSYS Maxwell tutorials and modeling a 3D transformer from scratch. And the reason I want to do this is because in previous tutorials we were using one model that was generated by the PE Mag tool and it has an individual loop for each winding of the coil. And that wasn't working very well for the parasitic extraction tools, the Q3D extractor, and just trying to run the AC analysis. So I'm going to try modeling one from the ground up. And then in the next videos after this, we'll look at some parasitic extraction. So let's get into it. We're gonna start off here with a new project. So we'll go up here. We'll just go with the defaults. The default is this Maxwell 3D model here. So you can just do that if you wanna add it to an existing project. And also the solution type is magnetostatic. I think eddy current's a tiny bit more accurate, but magnetostatic should be good for now. So one thing I wanted to point out, like COMSOL, you can add project variables in here. And the difference, unfortunately, is that you can't use these variables when you're defining the geometry. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple just to demo it. So I'm gonna use the same core that we we're doing for the other tutorials. So I'll do a name here, we'll call this um, core O, D, I, D, and H, T. So I'll put in these numbers. So we've got core O, D, and that one, you just, if you just press L, it'll take you down to the length. So we're doing millimeters here. We're gonna do 12.7. We've got that one. We'll make another one we'll call core x w so this is just the width of the core itself you know when we access these variables we've done previously we can do a dollar sign and then we can do core od minus core id over two, and I put this dollar sign in the wrong spot here. But you can see that automatically calculates. For that one, we don't need to put any units. It'll automatically do the units. Apply that. You can see the variables are down here now. And we'll go to draw the model. And we don't need to make a drawing plane in this. We can just select which drawing plane we want over here and we're gonna do we'll draw it this way so that the toroid is in the xy plane and then up is in the z plane so we want this to be xz so now we can draw the cross section here and revolve it around so if you hold shift then you can move like this panning and if you hold down the middle mouse scroll button, then you can rotate. And if you rotate with the middle mouse button on the edge, that's a rotate like this versus sort of a 3D rotate. So now we wanna make the cross section, which is gonna be a rectangle. And if we try and enter variables down here, so for the X, what we're gonna want it to go over half of the inner diameter. So let's just say we wrote here core ID divided by 2. Now if we hit enter, we get this error. So you can't put variables down here in these, so you have to do it manually kind of. So core ID divided by 2, if I put that in the calculator here, that's 3.81 and then the height divided by 2 is 2.375. So we want to start with this as 3.8 one, y is zero, and z is gonna be minus 2.375. We hit enter, now it's changed to dx. So this is the width, and for the width, we're gonna use this value here that we calculated. So it's 2.54, zero on the y, 
and the z is just going to be the height. So that's 4.75. Now I created it here. We got to zoom out. So control and scroll to zoom out. And then we have shift to move around here. So just looking at this, it doesn't look centered. So if you do the measure here, you can do position. So this right here is 0, 6. Yeah, so this one is minus 3, 5, 7, 5. So this didn't work, so we're going to try that again. Going to do control Z, create a rectangle. Okay, so it looks like it worked this time. It's pretty in the center. And the next thing we want to do is fillet the edges. So with this selected, we can't click fillet. So in this one, we have to change the selection to vertex. That lets us select the edges. You have to hold control to select multiple points. So we can get all four corners and then fillet. And this is where we do just half a millimeter. So now to revolve it, we're gonna switch this back to object and select it. And then this is the revolve right here. We're gonna do it around the Z axis, 360 degrees. There's our toroid core. So next we're gonna do the path for the coil. And we're gonna use a rectangle. So we're gonna keep it in the X, Z plane and rectangle. This one, we want the X to start outside by an amount that is the spacing of the core coating, which we're gonna say is 0 0.05 millimeters, plus the spacing of the wire insulation, which we're gonna say is 0 0.1 millimeters, plus the radius of the wire, uh, which we're gonna say is 0 0.202 millimeters. So if you add that up, then the X starts at 3.458. We do zero for the Y, and then by the same math, the Z is gonna be minus 2.727. And then for these widths and heights, we wanna uh, do the widths from before plus twice those numbers because we have it on each side. So this one is 3.244, and this one is 5.454. So, looks like it might be correct. All right, so now we can change this back to vertex, get these corners, control, Select the four corners. I'm make sure I'm getting the right corner here. We'll fillet it. So to make this nice and round, we'll take the 0.5 from the core fillet and we'll add 0 0.15, 0 0.1, and 0 0.202 to get 0.952. So that looks pretty good. We can change this to edge. So select the edge. So that looks like it's lined up pretty well with these. So I went ahead and saved the project, Toroid Transformer. Uh, now you can't really split all these edges the same way you do in ComSol, but what you can do is if we have this on Select Edge and we Control Select this part here, then we can go to Edge and Create Object from Edge. And that creates these three edge objects. And we're gonna do that again for this part here. And you'll see what we're doing. Now we have all these edge objects. And now we can get rid of this rectangle we just made. We've got these edges now. We can select the top three edges and do this rotate. So you can see this little preview line here of where it is. Uh, we're just going to do 10 turns. So we want to rotate around Z. And if we divide 360 by 10, that's 36. So we can see this is going to be 36. Okay, now we have that rotation. 
and to connect them together we'll just make a line here and you can just click if you click near here it'll actually connect them pretty easily and then for the third click you just click again the same point and now we have that line connected so now you can select stuff over here is a little easier if you right click you can do this uh, collapse all that makes it kind of easy if you click here you can hold shift select all of these you can see they're all pink now and then go up here this rotate around axis here with this little plus that lets you duplicate and rotate so here we can say total number we want 10 and this one you include the first one so we'll put z we want 10 at 36 degrees and there's this attached to original object we don't need that so just click ok and now there's 10 it came back around and they're all connected so now there's a couple ways you can inject signals in Maxwell so one is we could just leave this a closed loop kind of like the PE mag model and have one surface in here that we inject the signal into so it would flow around and back to that surface the other way is to have it more like an actual test setup where we bring leads out and the difference here is that they want the leads to extend in this case to the edge of the simulation boundary so we won't worry about that right now I will just um, break a spot in here where we can extend these leads so we'll just select and we want to do this on this x-axis just to make it easy for us to add points and extend the leads so we can just select those three and can try hitting delete let's see so it didn't work to hit delete because we're on select edge so we change that to object then we can select you could select them over here but it's a little hard to see which ones they are now because there's so many so we're going to select these three as objects and hit the delete key so now they're gone so right now what we can do is collapse this again and select all of these and just turn this into a group with this union so now we just have one polyline for everything so to turn this into a wire we're going to need to create a circle that we're going to sweep along this path and we're going to want to do that in this plane here so that's the yz plane so we're going to change this to yz and make a circle here not an ellipse a circle and we'll just try it at the origin to start with so then we want the radius to be 0 0.202 so there it is so we have that selected we're on object selection mode and then we control click the path and then we can do sweep along path and just use the default okay so that didn't work let's see if we select the path first that still didn't work so I guess maybe it does need to be right on the edge of the path for it to work so we're going to create it again and we'll create it on this path the easiest way to do that is to get in a position here where you can see it click on the circle and then we'll just click right here for our starting point and now we're just into the dx so we can press tab and then do the point two zero two we have it there now hold down control select the path second so the circle first path second click ok and there it is okay so that's how it works now that we have this path here so this is a single object and we can do the duplicate rotate on that around the z-axis and give it 18 degrees and we just want to have two of those so we're gonna make the secondary coil and there we go now we've got primary and the secondary so we can click on them here double click this will let you rename it so we'll just call this primary and 
this one secondary. So we can get rid of these messages. And now we need to make a box for the air. Since this thing's 12 across, I think we'll just make that like 20 across, 20 centimeters. So we'll do minus 10 for all of these. And then we'll do 20 for all of these. And that'll give us a box. So that's pretty good. And we can rename this. And right click on it and do view, hide and active view. So that'll make the box disappear so it doesn't get in the way. Now we need to extend these wires. So in Maxwell for this analysis, it wants the edge of where we're injecting the signal to be on the edge of the simulation, which is going to be the edge of the air box. So to do that, we want to extend these wires out. And first we want to see where they are and where the air box is so we can figure out how far to extend them. So we do measure, we do position, and click right here. And it says X, Y, Z for this point here is 5.75 is the X. And that's the axis here that we're interested in. So if we have the box is 20, that means it's 10 to the edge. So 5.75 we would want to extend it 4.25 more to get to the edge. So to do that, we can close this and change this to face. Select these two faces, and we're going to do surface and move faces along normal. We want to do 4.25. So that should bring them out to the edge of the box. We can click on the box to see. So they are now right on the edge of the box. And you can double check that with this measure position. So now they're at 10. And I have had some things in the past where I get weird stuff where if you measure this, depending on all the stuff you did, one time I had it where it was like 9.9999999998 or something. And so I had to, um, actually extend it and clip it to get it to exactly 10 because it was causing errors. Uh, anyway, this next one here, we can't do this one in the same way because it's at a slight angle. So it needs to be clipped at a slight angle. So the way to do that is we'll just extend it past where we want it to go. So we'll do surface normal, do five. And now we'll see, do escape, click on the air. We can see that this one is sticking out very slightly past the edge. So what we can do with that, we don't want to merge it with the air because that will get rid of the air. So we have to make a new box. So we'll just make a new cube here. And it's going to be the same as the air. So minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. 20. So we have this new box and we can select that box and we want this to be on objects now. So this new box and the secondary we'll do control click. Now that we have both of those, see if we did it in the right order or not. Um, but then we can do this intersect operation here. And so that worked. So now you can see it clipped it at a very slight angle here. So that it'll line up when we select the air box now. There it is in line with the angle. Um, the problem with what it just did was that it got rid of it made the box the primary, and we actually wanted the box to be the secondary from that operation. So I think we want to 
undo that and redo it where we select the secondary first and then the box and then we do intersect and that way you can see it got rid of the box put it underneath the secondary so now the secondary is still the main geometry in our list now we can double check just this measure position and right here we have 10 so it is right on the edge of 10. So that's it for creating a 3D model from scratch. So in the next video, I'm going to go over using this model to do some AC analysis. So you can check that one out, and thanks for watching.